Hello, in this video I'm going to show some surprising similarities and relationships between some things that seem unrelated, which are the Fibonacci numbers, golden ratio, the fifth harmonic as it's used in astrology, and zodiac signs. So these things may not seem like they have any direct connection to each other, like what does the golden ratio have to do with gold zodiac signs? I mean, it's all seems like very different things. So we're going to look at how they're actually connected and related to each other. <clears throat> Excuse me, to each other. And this is part of the theoretical framework for vibrational astrology, which is based on vibration and sacred geometry. And part of the sacred geometry is the amazing ways, the surprising ways in which Things are woven together and connected in a whole fabric. So we're going to look at some of these relationships. So first of all, the Fibonacci numbers. You're probably familiar with them. I'm showing the first ones on the slide here. And as you probably know, the Fibonacci numbers start with 0 and 1. And then you add to the last two numbers to get the next number. So 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 5 plus 8 is 13, and so on. And here are some of the relationships between these different things that I mentioned. First one is that this, this sequence of numbers that we call the Fibonacci numbers, the two numbers that are added together to get the next number approach the proportion of the golden ratio. So, for example, if we divide uh, 8 divided by 5, or 13 divided by 8, or 21 divided by 13, simply divide any number in the sequence by the previous number. And as you go to the larger and larger numbers, that ratio for example, 144 divided by 89 gets closer and closer to the golden ratio. The golden ratio, rounded off to six digits, is 1.618034. By the time we get to 144 divided by 89, it's very close, 1.617977. And if we continue the sequence, it gets closer and closer. So that's just a fascinating fact that the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio are not independent of each other. It's one of these mysterious, beautiful properties or qualities or characteristics, whatever you want to call it, of Fibonacci numbers. So there's one connection between the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers. As I go through this, I'll show more and more connections between these four things that I listed in the opening screen. Number two, if you take exponents of the golden ratio, what I mean by this is the golden ratio, rounded off to three digits, is 1.618. And this little symbol here is phi. Sometimes we refer to the golden ratio as simply phi. It's an, a nice abbreviated way, and the, the Greek letter phi has been given to the golden ratio. Just like you may know that pi, the relationship of the circumference of the circle to the diameter, is given the Greek letter pi. So here phi is, is, given, is the name given for the golden ratio. Well, if you take phi times phi... In other words, the golden ratio times the golden ratio. We call that phi squared. Amazingly, it's one more than phi, 2.618. Phi cubed, in other words, phi to the third power is 4.236. Phi to the fourth power equals 6.854, and so on. And the golden ratio, in a, as a series of these exponential functions, is itself in a golden <laughs> ratio. So it's very, very cool. And what's interesting about that is 
this is the same kind of property that the consecutive Fibonacci numbers have. Consecutive Fibonacci numbers are in the ratio of the gold, are in the golden ratio, and the exponents of the golden ratio, the successive ones, are also in the golden ratio. So there's all these proportions and relationships, and if your eyes are starting to glaze over, and this seems a little confusing, that's fine. What we're talking about is the, these mysterious, beautiful proportions that just happen to occur. So we see two similarities between Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. And again, this second one is simply that successive numbers are in the golden ratio. In the case of Fibonacci numbers, you simply take the successive numbers. In the case of the golden ratio, you take the exponents of the golden ratio, and the successive ones are in the golden ratio. Okay, third thing. Let's look at the formula for the golden ratio. There is a formula to calculate it, and it's the square root of 5 plus 1. You take that whole thing divided by 2, and that will produce the exact value of the golden ratio. Well, here's where the number 5 comes in. Let me go back to my opening screen. I said I was going to talk about relationships between Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. Talked about two of those. Now we're going to talk about the fifth harmonic in astrology and zodiac signs. So now I'm introducing you to the first relationship of the number 5 to the golden ratio, which is this. The formula for the golden ratio has the square root of 5 in it. So what happens is that 5 has a very strong connection to the golden ratio, more than any other number. We're going to see it a few ways. First way we're seeing it here is square root of 5 appears in the formula. We also have a 1 and a 2. We're going to see 1s and 2s and 5. And also, you could take this formula, square root of 5 plus 1, that whole thing divided by 2, and you can uh, apply the uh, associative property, if you're familiar with this, um, to this. You can call the divided by 2 times 0.5, and then you do the associative uh, A times B plus C. You, you multiply that out, if you're familiar with basic algebra. And you get this interesting formula, square root of 5 times 0.5 plus 0.5. This is the same exact formula as the one I show at the top, just expressed differently. Well, that's kind of fun. The only number you see is 5. <laughs> so the point is that the golden ratio just happens to have a lot of 5 in the formula to create it. And the part that I think is the most interesting is the square root of 5, which I talk about here on this slide. The reason why this square root of 5 is very intriguing is because square functions appear in nature. For example, we've all heard the formula E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous formula that energy and matter are the same thing. They can be converted into each other. And there's a formula for converting energy into matter, or matter into energy, and it's E equals mc squared. There's that square function. We see square functions over and over again in the basic nature of life. When you think about it, energy is matter, and the Conversion between them involves a square function. Also gravity. The reason why I'm on planet Earth and you are on planet Earth is because the Earth is holding us to it. Gravity. So the force of gravity also involves a square function. It also has a constant called the gravitational constant. And then you multiply that constant times the mass of object 1 times the mass of object 2 and divide it by the distance between the two things squared. So we're actually pulling the Earth towards us, but the Earth is so much bigger that that the force of us to the Earth feels much greater. Okay, 
bottom line you know, of what I'm getting at is square functions. For some reason, Mother Nature loves square functions. Incidentally, they're, they're fractal because you're multiplying something by itself. So you have this self-similarity. But anyway, square functions. Well, a square root function that we see in the formula for the golden ratio is simply the square function going the other way. So if you go from the squared function the other way, you're taking the square root. So to get from A to B, you would square it and get from B to A from the square back, you're taking the square root. So square root and squared are simply the same thing going in opposite directions. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> what I'm saying is this. Square functions or square root functions are fundamental to nature. And again, we see the critically important square root function in the golden ratio. And what is it a square root of? Five. So five and the golden ratio are closely connected. They're also closely connected. My fourth point here in the relationship between these four things is that geometrically, the golden mean or golden ratio, it's another term for golden ratio, golden ratio or golden mean, geometrically, it's, you'll see five involved. Many ways that you see five closely connected to the golden ratio. So here's a five-pointed star or pentagram. And the red, the longest of these line segments, the length of that divided by the green, this line segment is the golden ratio. The green, which you see is a longer line segment than the blue, if you divide the length of this green segment by this blue segment, also the golden ratio, and the blue segment divided by this magenta segment, also the golden ratio. So I've listed all three of those there. So built into the pentagram is the golden ratio. How many points are there in the pentagram? Five. So even geometrically, the golden ratio is embedded in the geometric fiveness, the five quality of the pentagram. And by the way, I give the source of this image and this summary from uh, this website here. I just copied and pasted it from that website into this uh, video. <clears throat> now, my fifth point. Here's where we start bringing in, in astrology, what we call the fifth harmonic. In the style of astrology I do, we call it five vibration. So five vibration is another term for fifth harmonic. And what we see is this, the meaning of them. That the number five, where does it appear in life? It appears in living things. Five fingers. Two sets of five fingers, two sets of five toes. Many flowers have five petals. Not all of them, by the way, but many, many of them have five petals. Fiveness becomes involved with living things very often. It's connected with living things just as an observation. And the five vibration, as we interpret it in vibrational astrology, is flowing it's organic, it's fluid, it doesn't have strict hard edges like a crystalline physical structure. It's, it's curious, it's, it wants to investigate and explore. It has a lifelike living quality. And the golden ratio is involved in living things. As you probably know, it's embedded in the shape of sunflowers, many other living things, seashells, etc. The golden ratio and the number five, just from observation and from the mathematics, they're intertwined and they're both related to organic life and flow and curiosity and exploration. So that's an interesting similarity from the astrological standpoint. So it's interesting how 
You can look at this mathematically, you can look at it in different perspectives, and they're all saying the same thing. So this is one of the beautiful things in the theoretical foundations of vibrational astrology, how there's a consistent, clear basis and how it all works together. Now, I didn't talk about the zodiac yet. I talked about uh, Fibonacci numbers, golden ratio, and now I've talked about five vibration. Where does the zodiac sign come in? Well, if you've watched some of my other videos or studied this in some other way, you know that we have, we in a vibrational astrology, we have a very compelling and convincing theory for why there are zodiac signs. We know where they come from, and they come out of Fibonacci numbers. Believe it or not, Fibonacci numbers create the zodiac, and I have other videos that explain this in great detail. And specifically, what we do is we take the Fibonacci numbers and we put them into a rhythm, what's called a modulus function in mathematics. And those rhythms of Fibonacci numbers are called Paisano periods. This is very well known in mathematics. And you can do a Paisano period to any number. And it just so happens that Paisano period 10, which is 5 times 2, is especially important in creating the patterns of the zodiac signs. It also creates the pattern of the four elements, fire, earth, air, water. It also creates the pattern of the three modes, cardinal, fixed, and mutable. What I'm saying is that these Paisano periods are embedded in life, creating in, what, in space the zodiac. Again, this is explained in great detail in other videos. But what I'm emphasizing here is how five, fiveness gets involved very strongly in creating the zodiac. It's not the only number. There are many other numbers that create it. But five, and particularly five times two, ten, very strongly set the foundations of the structure and space that we call the zodiac. So, the zodiac, I'm going to read my second paragraph here. The zodiac is related to how living things are oriented in life. Fibonacci numbers and Paisano periods based on multiples of five are fundamental in creating the 12 zodiac signs, the four elements, the three modes, and other features of the zodiac signs. So the Paisano period 10 is one of the most important um, foundations for creating a zodiac. There are many other numbers, but when you go through this information that I've made available in, in many videos, to start writing articles and books on this as well, you find that Paisano period 10 is particularly important. Why 10? Why not Paisano 12, 11? They also create the zodiac. But when you analyze the details, the way that Paisano period 10 does it is so incredibly detailed and beautiful. And again, it's because 5, and especially 5 times 2, 10, because it sets this yin-yang polarity and flow of life for how organic structures, curiosity, and exploration develop. The dance of life. The inert world doesn't dance. Living things dance and explore. And I think that scientists are going to discover that even plants, believe it or not, are discovering and exploring, even though they're, in, they're not moving around in space. They, there's a life quality of responsiveness that is involved in living things through the Fibonacci numbers and the five qualities, the five vibrations that flow through living things. So as I mentioned before in the third paragraph, many other Paisano periods are involved in creating the zodiac signs and patterns of zodiac signs. Five just plays a particularly strong role, that's all, and also Five is not some special number more important than other numbers. 
it's very special, important, and vital, and more important in certain respects. But the amazing thing is that all vibrations are extremely important, vital, and necessary. So they just work in different ways. What I'm showing here in this video is how these four things that I mentioned in the opening slide, what are those four things? Let's go back to them so I don't stumble on my words all the way back, <clears throat> all the way back here. Fibonacci numbers, the golden ratio, the five vibration, and zodiac signs. They're all interconnected and woven together. How are, it, what does this have to do with zodiac signs? Explained in more detail in other videos. How the Fibonacci numbers put into certain rhythms create the zodiac, believe it or not. And, and it's especially a five based vibration of five times two that is particularly strong, although many other numbers are involved in creating the zodiac as well. Okay. So I think we're just about done here. Just a few more slides. Um, here's a seventh thing. I was not even sure I was going to include this, but it's kind of cute that if you look at the Fibonacci numbers, the fifth uh, number in, in the Fibonacci sequence, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5 is 5. I don't know if that really means anything that the fifth number is five, but anyway, it's kind of cute. Uh, the other things I said are definitely and clearly important, um, and, and they have relevance and meaning. If, for example, for people like myself who are involved in astrology, because this is setting the framework. These are the, this is the sacred geometry and the vibrations, which are the basis of astrology. So conclusion, Fibonacci numbers, the golden ratio, the five vibration, and the zodiac signs have a close relationship to each other. These relationships are strong, they're important, they're foundational, they are the threads uh, in Vedic, ancient Vedic astrology, we call the sutras, the threads of wisdom that um, are the basis of astrology. So they're strong even though they have been overlooked and even though they appear to some people to be subtle. So, you know, if you're a practicing astrologer, all of this theory is not completely essential, but it does give you a deeper appreciation for what we're talking about when we're interpreting five vibration. And we do interpret the golden ratio. We have what are called golden ratio midpoint structures, and they're very important, and they have an impact. And, and their impact is somewhat similar to five vibration. It's going to be different. I mean, it, it is different, but there's some similarity because of the similarities between five vibration and the golden ratio. How the, And they're all woven together into the Fibonacci sequence of numbers. Okay. What I'm sharing with you is just some of the beautiful, intricate, and complex ways in which Mother Nature is woven together into this beautiful tapestry in which we live. And this is something to just, if nothing else, just to enjoy the, the mystery and the, the beauty and the awesome intricacy and elegance of it. We don't even need to have a practical application, uh, although we have that as well. Thank you very much, my friends, for listening. God bless. Namaste.